back to Spruverse, my scale model universe, people of Earth. Welcome to part three of Build the Spindrift from Land of the Giants. And this is going to be a, a quite a quite a big update, I think, with quite a bit of progress. Hopefully you'll see some progress because if we don't get some progress, you know what I mean? It's like, let's just switch the lights off and go down to the pub. I wish we had a pub. Okay quick update here for you um <clears throat> when last we uh met i was discussing the issue i had with the gappage on the front of the ship i was having a difficult time aligning the top uh, uh front fuselage with the with the bottom it was just the piece of pla that i had was a little warped and i did try a little heat to it but I'm nervous of this PLA. I got to tell you, if you don't know what you're doing and it gets too much heat too fast, it's over. So I just don't want to, I, I didn't want to keep going. So here's what I did do. I was able to actually get some one minute epoxy and I uh, basically butted the bottom of this, uh, of the top, which I had already attached to the windows and then I clamped it through the windows. I don't have any footage of it, but I did record, I did take, I did take a photo to show you uh, because I, w I wanted you to see it. Here it is. So that's what I did. I clamped it and it worked fine. I got everything pretty much to come back and align itself. So that was a result and i think you'll see here now let me show you um yeah let me let me show you here i think you can see that i've got a little little bit of puttying i did but for the most part uh when i tip it up it it, it actually it sealed up quite nicely so i'm i'm relatively happy with that i have some serious gappage to deal with and uh <clears throat> that's been a bit of an issue for me and so w what has happened here essentially is the the rear cover is just it's not lining up I don't know it was you know it's one of those things where you go hey it was fine when I started or I thought it was fine when I started but for some strange reason when you start to clamp all this into place and get it where you need it to go I couldn't get it. I could. I could not get this gap uh, to to actually close. Uh, <clears throat> let me show you. Let me show you that before we dive into the next issue I want to talk about. So here's my my back, and when you drop the shell in, you'll notice huge gappage. Look at that, and it's 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 pretty significant. So. <clears throat> I have to make a choice. Am I lining it up to the back or am I lining it up to the front? And my preference is to get this nice uh, as tight as I can and then I will just take some epoxy putty, get this in here uh, and get some get some Bondo and, and, and I'll get this the, the back of this all, all cleaned up. Um, the only other issue that I'm going to face with that is my fin my fin and making sure that my fin actually fits so what I've what I've got to do here is is you know in, in doing a test fit of my my fin I'm noticing that I'm 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 quite a bit off here so I've got to figure out how to actually um, how to get this how to get this to sit down a little nicer uh, and the only way for me to do that is to actually cut cut this back uh, m measure up what this distance is obviously and um, where's the ruler when you want it here it is so we're talking about <coughs> we're talking about 15 mil it's off by 15 mil, which means that this is going to come back 15 mil here on this side, and I'll just I'll I'll just take that on the bandsaw and I'll trim it out, and we should be we should be golden. 
uh, that should allow that to, to slip in here nicely. So that's issue number 3,221 that I'm dealing with. Um, I couldn't tell you, uh, I, I, I couldn't tell you um, why the, this was out of alignment. Only that I do know is that the, the nose itself, this, this window here, um, let, me, uh, let me show you here. Uh, let's see here. No, that's not the way. To, that's not the way to do it. Here, here's the way to do it. So, <clears throat> this it's actually really interesting. This piece is one piece, and the angle of it is critical to be able to actually seal them up together. Well, when you drop these two pieces in and line everything up, you're fine. But when you try to actually attach this front window and get that lined up, it pushes everything forward to get this angle correct for this to seal. So when that happens, you you get gappage here. You get a serious you get a serious amount of gappage, and so that's what I'm dealing with. But you know, we will we will prevail here, and I'll uh, I'll I'll get that cleaned up. Okay, so. <clears throat> I'm working on that. I'm working on the lights for the teardrops. We'll talk about that in just a second. And this this infamous bubble. So what I have to do now is I have to get my teardrop to, to actually work correctly. And the way I'm going to do that is I have to bring this bubble in from underneath so that it it seals and it seals nicely uh, it, it it seals nicely inside like like this. Now the difficulty that I have had is my inability to actually cut this out nicely. I couldn't get it clean enough. So my solution to that is, is I've got some thin strip of styrene and it's thin enough that I can actually, uh, uh, you know, work with it. And I'm going to glue this in, I'm going to glue this on the inside of this all the way around. And what that's going to do is it's, it's going to allow me to get a crisp line on the inside. It would also make it a, a, just a little tighter for the, uh, for the bubble, but it'll be nice and crisp. And then once that's in, I can actually uh, putty up against it and, and I, I, I should get a relatively clean line and then we can paint that out. So I've got that to do. Um, I'm powering this up with uh, a little transformer, so I'm plugged in here with my pigtail, and uh, you can see here I've got there there I've got my my plug, and I'm really liking these plugs. I found these on on Amazon, and what I love about them is is they've got these little dust covers that you can paint. So I'm going to be painting that orange, so it basically disappears. But you're never going to see it anyway because it, it's it's underneath. Uh, I'm not lighting my engines as I mentioned. I have got the windows in. <clears throat> you can see that. Uh, let me show you that here. And I've got these windows in, and I put some diffusion on them, and they're looking really nice. And uh, what I'll do is I'll hit I'll hit a flashlight in here, and you can see this one light up. And uh, you can see it, it really, it, it does a nice job diffusing the light and lighting that up. And what I've done is, is I've got a, I've got a, uh, a strip of light that I've put on, on the outside here, uh, on the inside underneath. And that will just hit this and, 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 and light that up. So I'm very happy with that. So... You know, it's it's a lot of patch, patching and painting, but I feel like I've I've moved back a few steps, but I feel like I'm moving forward. And I know, I guarantee you, in this 
in this update, we'll really have some serious, um, serious advancement. Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about my uh, <coughs> teardrop engine effect. And it's really interesting, you know, these engines, there's, a, there's been a lot of discussion about how these engines actually work and what does the red light mean and occasionally there was a blue light. Well, I, I think some of the conjecture out there, and I do like it and I'm kind of going to go with it, is, is when, the light, when the lights are red, it indicates that the, the power core is drained or is draining and it needs to be charged. When the lights are blue, that indicates that the power is at full charge and you, 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 know, you can fly. Now, the only issue with that is, is in the exterior uh, spaceship shots, you, you don't know because you, you never saw an angle in which you actually saw these lit. It wasn't until it crashes that you actually see this face of it. So I'm going to go with the theory that the red flashing pulsing indicates that your batteries are uh, low. Plus, it looks really cool. And, you know, there's nothing better than red flashing lights and a bright orange spaceship to hide yourself in, 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 in the foliage of a giant's uh, forest. <laughs> Don't you love it? I love it. I think it's awesome. Come on. It's great fun. And there's a couple of other things that I learned, too, is my antenna, uh, which, which is heareth. Here's my antenna. Uh, there's a theory about how that works too. One is that this is not an antenna, it's actually a tow hook. The other one is, is that it actually, uh, <clears throat> it actually can go inside and disappear or, or, or re retract, I should say, which is why sometimes you don't see this. <clears throat> I'm going to have it in the out position because why not? It looks cool. So that brings us to a little bit of lighting because I, I am jumping around a bit but if I don't get the lighting organized I'm never going to move move ahead so I want to do that before we get out of this segment and go to the next segment when I uh, show you uh, some advancement in some of these things okay <clears throat> so for the for the light what I've done is is I had a pair of teardrops that came with the Randy Cooper upgrade kit and I had a pair that came with the regular kit so I have two pairs Randy's I'm using for the exterior finish because I like them there are they just they, they seem to fit a lot better if you can believe it and what I've done with these is I've pushed them back about an inch inch and a half or in the in the world of metrics for those of you who want to know what, it, what that means, it's about 40 millimeters away from the actual teardrop that we'll see. And what I did was, is I took 12 red lights, and these are all five mils, and I've made those up, I've put them into a bundle, I've connected them, and they will go to my little uh, pulsing board that I'm using, and I am using the Voodoo Effects board. Uh, he, uh, and I did profusely apologize to Elliot at Fedoratron and thank him for his, but I, I'm going to go with this one. Um, so, uh, and I discussed that in, in the previous update, so I won't get into it again. So what I thought we'd do now is let's, let's jump over to the bench, which this is very exciting. It's a red letter day. We're going to jump to the bench, and we can now. So I'm pretty excited about that. So I want to jump over to the bench, and I want to make up. I want to show you how I make up some of these LEDs. Now, I want to say is this is not a tutorial on how to do electrics because I am the last person who should be sitting here and giving you advice on how to do electrics. Given the fact that my grade for electrics is about a D plus, and I am trying to get that up to a C minus. I would one day like to be at a B, but right now I'm in the D's just in terms of my learning. But uh, I have learned how to do some things. And for those of you who want to stick around for the next segment and, and see how I put an LED together with its uh, resistor, stick around. For those of you who want to advance to the next segment, 
this segment will probably be about two two minutes, three minutes, and you can you can skip ahead. <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to be happy. I'm trying to be helpful to everybody, right? I, I want everybody to stick around, and I want all to be welcome. Okay, let's go over to the bench. Here we are, and <clears throat> what I want to do now is I just want to I want to I want to start putting together some of these. Um, some of these LEDs. Now, I've got one here that I've already done. Here it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning this where this camera is. I, I apologize. There. <laughs> here it is. And you'll see that this lights up quite well. They're nice and bright. Okay. So... Here, I'm learning how to use this camera. Nothing better than learning on your time, right? There it is. <laughs> okay, so that's a red light. So what I'm doing is I am taking some, I've got, I've got different versions, but it doesn't matter, they're the same thing. And I'm making up these LEDs. Now some of them are going to be for those teardrops and some of them are going to be for the down. I'm going to be putting, I'm going to be putting a few in the down. And this is the grill that they'll go in. And it's the same. It's the same principle. Why am I fighting with where this camera actually is? It's here. Ah, okay. There it is. Well, you can see that. So that's my grill. Okay. How do I work? Well, the way I work is, I take a, I take a light, and just by habit, just by habit, I always check it to make sure that it is, it is good. So I know that's good. So what I, and then the, the next thing I do is, is I, I look at, I look at my LED because it has a long, a long line and a short one, the cathode and the anode. And the, I know that the, uh, the actual, the positive side is the side that is longer than the short side. So the first thing I do is, is I snip the negative side and then I snip the positive side just to shorten them up a little bit. But now I know which one is which. So I can put this in my helping hands and I use a little bit of liquid, uh, the liquid flux. I love this stuff. I wish I could find this company. I have another version of it. I, I have this version of it, which um, I'm going to be using uh, when this one runs out. It's okay, but it's not as great as the, uh, the the other one. And I just I bought it like five years ago, and I've ne and I think they're out of business. I don't know. So I am. Um, just shortening my resistor, and these resistors right here are 200 ohms, so they're going to be nice and bright. I want mine bright, and what I do is I, I get I get solder on my on the tip of my soldering iron, and I lay it very carefully down on the long side, and I just touch it, and I let the solder run, and you hold it for just a second, and that's it. That's all it takes. And so now this is, this is now connected to the light. I then take my positive lead. So I cut myself some wire. And uh, let, me, let me open up just a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to cut myself some wire here. And what I do is I trim both ends just out of, uh, just out of habit, really. And then what I do is I get myself some heat heat treating tube and I get it to the length that I need it. Give that a trim. I thread it onto my wire. I take my wire and I wrap it around the other end of the of the resistor and then let me get you a little closer here there so that's like looking like that 
And then what I do is, is I just touch that end with just a little bit of my liquid resin, rosin, and get myself a little more solder, and I just touch it, and it flows, it flows beautifully. That's all you need to do, and that is, that is all sealed up nicely. Then I take, and it, it looks ugly, but we're going to make it beautiful right now by sliding the, we just slide the, uh, the shrink tube over it like that. I hit it with a little bit of heat so that that shrinks nicely like that. I flip it over. I flip it over. And now I'm ready to do my black side. So same thing. I, <clears throat> I just uh, give myself give myself some uh, some bare wire there and I wrap my negative. Now I don't when I'm doing something like this and I don't there's no real risk of me shorting this out because I've got one side covered. I don't need to worry about uh, putting a sleeve on the other side. You certainly could for bells and whistles or I should say straps and suspenders as my dear friend Lou would say. But you're not going to have any trouble with that and that is ready to go and that is how you do an LED. It's that simple and I'll show you. We'll just test it to make sure we're on and we're on so that's all good she's looking good and um, I am super happy with that super happy with that so there you go that is how you do a LED and I've got to carry on and I have got to make 10 of those so we'll make 10 of those okay so <clears throat> Lots going on. LEDs for my teardrop pulsing engine effect. We'll get that together. Cleaning up the inside rim for my bubble. I'm going to get that together. And I'm going to do one more just sanding of everything here so that uh, I'm ready to, what, well, once I've got this all cleaned up, and then I can get going on finishing up that bubble. Now, before this gets sealed up, that bubble has to be installed. And once that bubble is installed, I really don't want to be messing with painting or doing anything like that because you, it's so fragile, you know, it'll bust. And then I'll be on the phone begging uh, Randy Cooper to send me another. <laughs> That's not pretty. Okay. So uh, come back and uh, I'll show you my progress now that you know what we're doing and where we're doing it. I mean, I, we could stick around and start gluing this and puttying this if you want to, but I don't know. You, you, do you really want me to do that? Um, I'm not going to, but if you'd have rather see me actually do that, drop a note in the comments and say, hey, Phil, you know what? You should have stuck around and putted that up. We'd like to have seen it. I really do want to know if you want to see more in the weed stuff, okay? All right, stick around, and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, a quick jump in here to update you on my dome. Uh, it is all puttied, and I just need to sand that down, and I'm going to get a paint job on that, but I was working on the light for the dome. I wasn't crazy with the uh, 0805 SMD strip lighting. It was not punchy enough, and it, it just wasn't working. So what I've done is, is I've taken four five mils and I've punched them through the grill. I've put some, uh, uh, some of the uh, fiber fill under it for diffusion and I have a beautiful result. So I wanted to share that with, share that with you here. Um, so it's going to put out a perfect amount of light. It's going to glow really nicely. So I'm super happy with that. And uh, obviously, I'll get that fiber fill all cleaned up, and and uh, it'll it'll I'll, I'll make sure that it it looks it looks nice under cover. But I think you'll agree here that this is this is a really nice diffused way to go. Very happy with that. Okay, I just uh, 
I wanted to punch in and, and, and share that with you because it's, it's a result. So I'm very happy with that. So this can now be installed back into the dome as soon as, as soon as uh, I've got it all sanded down and I've got everything cleaned up. But uh, that is, I'm very happy with that. It's a result, and, it, and it's, it's just a little more, it's a little more efficient, and it'll be a lot cleaner. We'll all be a lot happier with that. <laughs> okay, stick around. Okay, well, um, I thought we'd, uh, first of all, what do you think? <laughs> I, why I haven't been wearing my Spindra shirt, I don't know. You know, usually you're supposed to dress for the occasion, right? But anyway, it's on today. Okay, uh, as we move forward, I'm getting into paint and I'm I'm basically getting on the final final before I uh, start inserting things in I've got to get the windows in the cockpit I've got to get the cockpit in and aligned that's going to take a little bit and then I've got to get the bubble in and then the lights and grid for that un under that and then it can be it can be closed up but before I start doing all of that nonsense I wanted to get a really final coat of paint on the exterior before I set my windows into the cockpit because once they're in not, you know keeping those clean is going to be paramount and I uh, all I can do is tape off from the outside at that point and you got to be really careful getting tape onto the clear plastic Anyway, I thought paint would be a fun thing to talk about. I am following uh, Randy Cooper, and Randy recommended the, uh, here it is. This is the, the Rust-Oleum Rustic Orange. Now, I've got this in the satin. It's a little too shiny. I'm going to hit it with a mat just to bring it down. Um, at the end to, to just kind of dull it way back but I won't do that just yet because I've got some decals to put on and some pinstriping and that sort of nonsense but this color is it's it's an interesting color and it feels pretty good to me and I thought to myself I thought self that feels very much like the spindrift and then I had one of my subscribers was kind enough to send me a really interesting piece of research. Now, I don't know the history of this email, and I don't know, um, I don't know a lot about it. All I know is, is I've got this email, and I wanted to share it with you because I thought it was really fascinating. Take a look at this. So, this, this is an email that basically says... Um, because obviously it probably you can't read it, but maybe some of you can. One of the unsolved mysteries of the universe, the color of the Spindrift Studio models from Land of the Giants has finally been solved. Lou Zutavern, uh, forgive me if I'm butchering that name, who worked for Greg Jean before striking out on his own as a model maker, sent me a fingernail-sized chip of paint from the Hero Spindrift model. The chip was affixed to a piece of cardstock with the inner side of the chip exposed, which means we're seeing paint that has been protected from years of weathering and fading from sunlight and the elements. Lou has a similar paint chip from Greg Jean's lightweight Spindrift model, and they're the same color. I've started making color matches using my big deck of Sherwin Williams paint chips. I figured that these color chips are available to anyone either from the Sherman Williams store or online and then modelers can use whatever brand of paint they want to create a matching color. The best match for Lou's chip is SW6622 Hardy Orange. The RGB values for Hardy Orange are 180-75-53 the actual paint sample was slightly too small for my mix scanner, but I got similar results with 181-188 for R, 75-77 for G, and 
six three excuse me for b i didn't find any good pantone matches for the paint chip the closest match was one six seven five c which is a shade too dark but i think you'll see here that this color is it's 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 interesting because it is now f forgive the light and forgive everything else but i would argue that that color is has got slightly more red in it than the rustic orange that i'm using which is probably too orange and if you think about it under studio conditions obviously a dark room gels on it and everything else it may be that we're seeing a lighter orange because of digital transfers uh, they've brightened the frame because it was too dark whatever but that color uh, um you know pretty feels feels like it would would be correct for the day so i thought that that was really interesting it's sw6622 hardy orange is the color so if any of you out there are painting spindrifts even if you've got the the small aurora version mobius version now i guess and you want to be studio accurate there you go that i think is really interesting now you can take it with a grain of salt you can disagree you can think it's a load of hogwash but i thought it was curious and i think it's fun to share that with you okay what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go back to painting the exterior of the spindrift teeth aren't working and then I can get it back in front of you and we can start uh, looking at fi final assembly before we seal it up. Now, that doesn't mean I'm over with. Oh, no, because the back end of this beauty uh, has some serious gappage. So we're going to have to fill that with some epoxy putty, get some Bondo on that, and then, you know, get that smoothed over. But I've got to install everything first uh, before we, we can do that. Also for my antenna i'm gonna get I've, I've i've got this looking very silver at the moment but i think i might dust it with a little gold you know, not to completely make it gold but just to just to give it some highlights and make it look interesting but i'm very happy with that that's the scratch built version as you know but interestingly enough in the studio model it does look like it has a, a little bit of a collar right here and I think the way that was achieved is a sleeve was drilled into the top here that this sat in and that sleeve was slightly raised and that gave it that little bit of a collar. So I think that that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find the appropriate piece of uh, brass tubing that I can cut down um, and but but glue it into the model high enough so that when this drops down into it, uh, it creates a little bit of a collar. So the, that's what we're going to do. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. So let us press on and get this, uh, this beauty in front of me. And then, oh my gosh, all of my foliage has come in for my crash scene diorama. And I just could not be happier. I'm really, really super happy with the foliage that has come in. So I think it's going to dress up beautifully. So let's plow on. Okay, a quick bump in here to sort of talk about some things because I don't want to I don't want to skip too much stuff you know because otherwise it's uh, it's show and tell <laughs> I, anyway so um, update the front of the fuselage has had its final final coat of the orange now it's way too shiny it's going to get a mat on it uh, I have not, well, there's a bunch of things I haven't done yet. I haven't got the windows in the front of this, this baby yet. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do that. I have put the final color on for the frame. I am using uh, this stuff. It's, I'm using, I don't have a close-up camera today. How about that? Uh, it's, um... It's Gundam color, Mr. Gundam. And this particular color uh, is called Titan's Blue. Now, 
believe it or not, it's sort of a metallic, it's like a gunmetal kind of cap, uh, color. It does have some blue in it. Here, I'll show you that. Uh, here, you can see. Now, obviously, there's a bunch going on here. These louver frames have to go in, and that'll hide a lot of the problems. They go, it goes about there, like that. So that'll, that'll start to look really good. The windows are not in either. So I'm working, I'm working to put the, win, the windows in. The, the bubble is ready to go. It's, it's, it just needs to be slid up from the inside. So it has that lovely, it dies into the sides. So I'm going to be working on that. Obviously, I've got to drill my shaft for my antenna. We talked about that. But the purpose of this actual moment in time is to show you what I intend to do. Now, my gappage is quite, it, it's quite severe here. And you can see here on the, on the back side, I've got, uh, if I can pull it this way more, maybe, yeah, that's better. That's better. So you can see this is quite a severe gap. Uh, it is I'm thinking it is just about six mil. Now that occurred when I pulled up the the front of the ship to get an alignment for this piece here to get this snug and pulled all the way up caused it to to come forward so far that 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 gap that six mil I mean it just it, it's made a huge difference now so there are two issues here that I'm dealing with not just that gap which I will deal with and we'll get that, uh, what we'll do is we'll get that sort of a pulled in and, and epoxied in um, as soon as we can. And then uh, we're going to have to fight a little bit with the back here because it's, um, it, it's just not perfect. But it's okay. It's okay. But it's, it's, a, little, it's a little off. But we'll be, a, we'll be okay. We'll make it work. Now, the issue is my fin. So... When I now put my, 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 my fin in, try saying that fast three times, what you realize is, is that you're now off by a significant amount. You're, you're actually off by uh, six mil. So what I have to do is, is I'm going to have to get on the bandsaw and I'm going to have to take back six mil from the back here and I'm going to do it very gingerly to make sure be, that I don't go too far. So I'm going to take that off with the bandsaw right now and then uh, check our fit. So let me do that and, and we'll see where we are because once that fin uh, drives in there then then I know I can start uh, I, I, I can start sort of working towards the end. I've got to get my, my teardrop engines uh, I've got to get those installed. And the tricky part is, is you have to start installing things before you can close it up. Well, once you've closed it up, you got to be super careful, like turning this thing upside down. You know, y y that bubble is, is super delicate. You know, you hit it, you, it it's, the end of, it's the end of it. So now we're getting down to some pretty critical stuff. And then obviously I've got to give a final coat of paint to the underneath of this. But let me do the fin first. We'll take a look at that and then we'll progress our way through what our final checklist is of things that have to happen. Okay. We've uh, corrected the fin. I uh, had to put it on the bandsaw and I had to give myself another f just under six mil to get that to, to slide over. And now I am in great shape. So you can see that the ship itself is, is complete. I've, uh, I've just got all this uh, gappage I'm going to be dealing with, but that's okay. Uh, we'll do this one piece at a time. We'll, we'll epoxy one end, we'll get that tight. 
This is the most important end to get tight in my opinion. And then the back, we'll get some epoxy putty in, in that hole. I love it because it'll act as a spacer. It will act uh, as a, 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 a gluing point. It'll give it some rigidity. And then I can finish that up with some, uh, some good old fashioned bonda because I think that's the best way to go. I've got a little carving to do. Uh, it's gonna be messy, but we'll get a nice result from it. And then the whole thing, once it's all together, I can tape it off and get, give it a final final. It is so frustrating every time you try to think you've, you've got a finished surface. Uh, it's scratching like crazy, this paint. So you've got to be super, super careful. And of course, I have to handle the darn thing. So it's not even about having rubber gloves on. It's just, it's getting little nicks and things. But anyway, that's, that, that's okay. It's all part of it. It's, it's fighting me to the end, but it, it, that, that's what a good model should do. <laughs> it should fight you. Okay, so we're all together. Um, it's, nice and, it's nice and clean. I've got a little gappage here that I'll take care of with some uh, epoxy putty once, once we're all together. Uh, I should be able to clean that up. I'm looking to see how I'm doing on my edges here. And um, I'm not pulled all the way together. So I think once I pull myself together, just threw you a line there for a job, but hey. Uh, once I pull myself together, I should be fine. <laughs> um, the, the issue with this gappage is going to be I have to get my engine grills in, glued in, before I can glue that in. And they have to go in from the back. They can't come in from the front. The way this is molded, I've got a lip and it pushes into that lip. So, uh, you know, am I complaining? Yes. Uh, could there have been a little more thought gone into this kit? Yes. But that's okay. I'm, I have uh, full gratitude for it. Oh, and by the way, while we're here, Episode 7, Season 1, The Manhunt. Check it out. It's a great episode to take a look at this ship uh, in, in, in scale to uh, the humans, uh, to actors. It's, it's actually a little bit bigger than this. But curiously, the one that they're using in this episode is super, super light. Super, super light. I, I, it, it's just like just a piece of fiberglass or something. I don't know, but it's very funny. But great episode to check out, Manhunt. Uh, season, season one, episode seven. Uh, you'll get a kick out of it. It's fun. Okay, so Finn is corrected. Um, I'm going to work on the uh, hole here for my, uh, for my antenna to make sure that is correct. I am then going to... Uh, get my windows in and get my cockpit in. So that's what we'll look at right now. Uh, let me uh, break this down and uh, put my put my windows put my windows in. Uh, I'm not going to do that on camera because uh, already I can see that it's it, it, it's going to fight me. So I want to get those in. Then I have to get the cockpit in. Um, and I'm going to test that before I try to put my bubble in because if I put my bubble in first I might have an issue sliding my cockpit in. Don't know yet. I'm going to break this down and we'll take a look at that next. Okay, I just put the windows in and I used my Solares Diamond Clear. Super clear and I got an excellent result. I'll tip this to, uh, let's see here, what, what camera should I show? I'll show this one. There we go. So take, take a look at this. It's, it's, super, it's uh, super clear. Um, that's an that's excellent result for me personally. I struggle with keeping my windows clear, not having microcrystal clear smudge everywhere, so I got a really nice clean result. I, I could not be happier. Um, so that's nice and clean. Those windows are in. That's a good job done. 
I really like uh, I really like the uh, the solar as some people don't like it they have difficulty with it I don't I find it's excellent for lenses for lamps in lights excellent for attaching really difficult delicate things I love it it's not cheap but UV curing glues that you know it's it, it's it's not like um, it's not like this is reinventing the wheels it's been around for quite a while but I just uh, I'm just really happy with that result so those are in and now I don't have to worry about the windows I've also put in this little brass turning uh, over here for my antenna and uh, what I like about that is it now has a, a it has a really nice lip that drops in nicely like that so I'm 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 I couldn't be happier with that and I'm gonna leave it I'm not gluing that in I'm, I'm gonna be leave, leaving that in case this ever has to travel that's one of those things that will break and can come out nice and easily so super happy with that so that can go in that can be actually one of the last things to to to, to go in there I'm gonna hit everything with some orange uh the orange paint one more time i'm scratching the bejesus out of this um just made a discovery that is is just a gift from the model gods and which is my rear engine plates which i thought had to go in from the back i was wrong nay nay they go in from the front which means i can close this puppy up and i can use this uh th this rear channel here this rear channel here for clamping really helpful super super helpful and also if I have any uh, wiring last minute wiring issues I can I can I can get to the guts of this thing so that is that's excellent as well so okay my uh, antenna base is in and secured my windows are in I'm going to uh, dust this you know do a final dusting on this when I know that I'm not drilling or, or cutting anything because I'm, I'm scratching this um, it's it's fine it's okay but I've, I've been scratching it um, the other thing I have to do is and I was hoping it would arrive today but it hasn't I'm I'm looking at automotive pinstriping for my gray lines I'm not going to I was hoping not to have to paint those on I do have a uh, a pattern that I created for them and uh, maybe we'll take a look at that because maybe painting these on is the correct thing to do and uh, I don't I don't have to I don't have to think about it or worry about it I'm gonna look at that right now um, and, and, and see whether or not um, I, I can um, I can make uh, make any sense of that so I'm gonna take one last look at the the front business here and see if there's anything else that needs to be touched up before I attach my Luva crash windows slash appliques for the front I don't really know what they are there for uh, some people call them Louvre windows. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But they go on, uh, they go on quite nicely, and they're going to need. They're definitely going to need um, a little bit of, of coaxing, and I've got some trimmage I'm going to have to do in this corner. I can see, so I'll take care of that uh, at the. I think I'll take care of that when I epoxy these in. So that'll be next. So I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do now? I think what I'm going to do is get a coat of paint on the rest of this because I've got to flip it over and I do not want to do that. Certainly don't want, don't want to do that when this, once this dome is in. I don't want to tip it over ever again. So I think that's what I'm going to do now is get a final coat of, of, the, uh, of the paint on the undercarriage of this thing and then I'll come back and do a final cleanup and 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 uh, and see what I can do just to touch up this all, all, all of this before I uh, say done done with the orange paint so that's what I'll do now I'm gonna I'm gonna well you can see it all needs to be 
<laughs> it needs to be painted and I'm gonna do that right now well I can't leave well enough alone so <laughs> I was looking at these livers and here's here's what I was looking at I was looking at this this liver and I was thinking to myself I I had it in the uh, the, the Titan as you know and uh, then I decided oh to uh, get something that was a little more just just a little more kind of dramatic so I, I decided to hit it with this silver and then I thought you know that's not working for me Eva so what I did was is I got some tape masking tape which is the exact width of these and I masked off the inside and I hit it with some of my bare metal silver and then I painted the outside uh, they were covered and then I masked those and I hit it with the the black and that I'm very happy with because you get some really nice shadowing and uh, that looks a lot more interesting and potent than that so um, that is what is going to end up on my spindrift this is what I thought was going to end up on my spindrift but it's just it's just bland but what's interesting is you know I, and I shouldn't be doing this, I know, but I'm, I, I've, been, I've been looking at this, this model, you know, this is, this is the, the, the filming miniature, but I don't know how much touching up and detail work, I don't know what's been done to it, but obviously the Louvers have been painted at some point, I, uh, they just looked, the paint looks too fresh. For everything else that's going on around that so I I don't know um, to say that I'm confused is an understatement but you know at a certain point you kind of got to just go with your gut right so anyway I'm I'm happy with that I'm going to mask this one off now and hit this with the same color and I'm uh, painting the spindrift it's it's behind you <laughs> <clears throat> And so that's drying and when that is all sort of when I'm happy and I know that I've got that to where it needs to be I'm gonna have to figure out how to protect it while I work on the top because that will mean the dome goes in the louvers go on the door goes in uh, and we can uh, close it close it up doesn't feel like we're getting to the finish line uh, but we are getting to a a finish line <laughs> so uh, while that's all drying I want to talk a little bit about my crash site diorama because I'm pretty excited about it so uh, come back in just a second here <laughs> and I don't know why we say come back in just a second you know what? it's just like anyway I'm going to grab some of my plants that I have been uh, I have been accumulating, and I want to share those with you because they're going to go in the crash site, and I'm pretty excited about it. Okay, let's let's take a look at those in the next segment. So, for the crash site, I needed overscaled plants, not plants in scale. So that's what I did. I went out and I was looking for plants that I thought would. Uh, would work for me and so the, a couple of them are are just regular sized sort of plants these are ferns just regular sized ferns but they can be that they're on a wire so they can be adjusted I've got some beautiful leaves palm leaves like these uh, which I love I've got several of those I've got these which are aquariums really uh, for reptiles but I love the way they they can also they can be uh, bent into shape so they'll be beautiful and uh, probably most likely behind the the spindrift not sure but they've got these really lovely bases here that uh, I'm I love uh, now obviously everything needs cleaning up and once we glue everything in and we blend everything in that'll disappear but I, I, I love that as a sturdy way to hold these down so I'm excited about that and then I'm super super excited about these 
here. Now they're completely adjustable, but, but look, look how fun that is. And uh, I, just, I just love the scale of it. I love the scale of it. Again, it's got this base, so that's gonna be perfect. So I've got several of those. And then I've got these things of beauty that are on what looks like logs. Now they're a giant scale as well. And they've got these wonderful uh, root systems, faux root systems coming out of them. And they're on these rock, little rock pedestals. And they can sit in front of the, uh, the spindrift if I want them to. But I've got two of those. And uh, I think you'll agree that that is starting to look really nifty. I mean, all of, all of this, this foliage and this crash site is going to look beautiful. Now, I've got a large base for all of these, uh, quite a large base that I'll be using. And uh, I, what I'm going to do is to prepare it is I'm going to put some uh, ground. Uh, I'll paint it brown and I'll get some dirt and dust and grass some grasses on there and that'll be the base for us just to sit our spin drift into and then we'll start dressing everything around the crash site because that's where this will really come alive and um, I, I, I think really give it make it the showpiece that it deserves so I'm I, I'm I just wanted to share all this with you because that's going to be the next element that we work on, which is the, the, the crash scene itself. Um, I'm excited to get there. Hopefully we'll get there in, 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 in uh, this update. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want it to go too long, uh, but I don't want it to also extend into a fourth part if I can, av <laughs> if I can avoid it. But anyway, that's the plan for foliage. Super excited about that. I mean, look, even you know, even in front of me. I mean, it, it it really it works. I think you'll agree, it all works. So that's 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 very encouraging. Okay, so that is the planting update. Uh, next segment, I'm gonna get the spin drift on the on the bench again, and we'll start to look at uh, final lighting hookups so that we can do a test of the lighting before we actually seal everything up. So we'll do that next. I've been doing some touch-ups and I put the cockpit in. I struggled with it for quite a while. It wasn't something I wanted to do on camera, but I've, I've, I've got it in and it's, it's, looking, it's, it's looking really, really nice. Um, I'm gonna try and uh, I'm gonna try and get some light in there for you so that you can see it lit up. Um, I think the best way for me to do this is to, is to hit these power leads, and uh, that will allow me to show it to you. Um, when something isn't designed to go in something else, you you know, you're going to be doing some scratch building, you're going to be doing some tweaking, you're going to be doing some puttying, some hiding, you're going to be doing a lot of different things, and that's okay. This is working out exactly the way I want it to. Uh, let's see here. Well, you got to turn the power on, Phil. There we go. All right, let me get this to camera for you. Come on, and there it is. There it is, and it's looking beautiful. I'm really super happy with it. Um, and, you know, all the detail is there, everything is there. So that couldn't, that couldn't be better. So that's, that's, a, that's a result. Um, The next thing I've got to do is, oh, I've, I, I've got the door in, so I can show you that. The door is in, and it's going to be sealed, obviously. Uh, there we go. For this particular, it, it's sealed. Now, I've got a little bit of photo etch that I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to stick right there 
for the uh, the buttons and then I've got a template that I will paint on uh, I think I'll paint paint on the stripe I, I'm not sure I have ordered some 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 three-quarter inch pinstripe but I'm just I'm not sure when it gets here I'll be more sure okay the next thing I want to do is I want to install these louvers here and they're go that's going to take a little bit of doing um, because you don't really want I don't want to be pushing on anything so forgive me for a second here while I look to see how this looks all lined up um, and then uh, this has to be epoxied in here some I think oh yeah it slides in quite nicely um, let me get let me get you to you can see that that that's just looking really really nice so that's that it's beefy it's it's got it's got a real nice statement it looks really strong and I just need to uh, what I need to do now is get some epoxy made up trim these and uh, make these make these look um, as solid as I can make them and uh, that believe it or not takes care of the business end, the front end, not the business end, but the front end of, of, of Spindrift. Then uh, the only thing left to do is to get this bubble in and, uh, and once, this, once this bubble is in I can then go towards uh, sealing this up and what that uh, we've talked about what that requires so um, I'm going to try and be as clean as I can because I don't want to make a mess here. So I'm going to probably give this tonight to kind of dry. I might even hit it actually with a coat of matte just to kind of try to see if I can seal it in and stop scratching it because it's scratching really, really easily. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do now. I've got all little, little bits of schmutz on here that I keep getting, but um, it's it's inevitable I suppose but there you go um, doing quite well I've got a little bit of schmutz there I've got a hit just noticed I mean you could literally spend the rest of your life just just tweaking this but at a certain point you have to say no it is going into a crash diorama so it, it is going to get dirtied up a little bit so at a certain point I have to let it go okay so lots of progress cockpit in windows in door in side windows are in uh, antenna is set up ready to go bubble is get uh, getting ready to put the bubble in um, that 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 will be huge I'm kind of stalling just a little bit because once that's in it this is a this is in a super fragile state so I'm just not not sure yet I just want to make sure that I'm sure sure and then we'll go to town um, the next thing to do is maybe just do a little tweak on these teardrops just to make sure I can get them in correctly because um, they need a little trimmage I think they need a little uh, they need a little little love but I'll just give you an idea of what they look like in because I think it really you really start to see the spindrift come alive and that's sort of exciting um, Nothing on this fits perfectly, but we're almost there. So um, there you go with um, with the uh, with those in. Pretty good, right? So um, super excited about that, and plenty of light comes through those, and it's really well diffused. As you can see so once I've got that light uh, pulsing they're gonna look really good so that's that really starts to make it look like the ship so I've got to just do a little bit of tweaking and sanding for those because they're not behaving they're not sitting in nicely and if I can get these to sit in nicely then I don't have to go back and mess with them 
And fortunately for me, the only uh, seam work I, I think I'm going to have to do is just this, this whole back area, which is going to create a mess. But I'm going to obviously try to prevent myself from making any more of a mess than I have to at this point. Pretty exciting, but lots to do. So I'm going to go away and clean up my teardrop uh, engine plates um, and get my louvers uh, all cleaned up and, and attached. And then um, I will be done done with the front of this ship and we can move on to the back. So details, details, but we're getting there. Oh, I, I have been working on the base as well. So um, perhaps uh, we'll get a we'll get a look at that in in um, in, in this update. We'll see. A quick lighting test of the teardrop engines. I'm running the Voodoo FX board and they're pulsing quite nicely. You are not getting uh, the full effect of this because as you can see, it, as, I, as I tip this, depending on which way I tip this, it, it, it changes the perspective. But I, I promise you, here in, in the studio, they're, they're perfectly balanced and, and lit quite nicely. So that effect is, is working. And uh, it's kind of fun to see it, 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 it up and running, but they're in. Um, now, uh, the way this is set up is in the, uh, well, let me show you here. In, the, in, in the, the, back, the back of this, I have got my red LEDs attached to uh, a single piece. We've seen this before, and they're projecting forward uh, they're projecting forward into the effect and uh, I may I may try a little fiber fill but I, I think the throw is is just enough and as I said as I look at them in person they're uh, they're, they're looking they're looking quite good I think this is um, actually I'm trying to see if I can show you well let me push this forward yeah, I can show you here. You can see my gappage here perfectly. Look at that. That's what I'm attending to. So once I get this all lined up and square, I've got to slowly start epoxying these. And then once I've got that to this point, I can go ahead and fill this gap. And as we know, my engine, my rear engines, I'm going to install last, which means I can, I can actually still get a hand in here and and, and work on the uh, work on the the electrics if the, if there's a problem. So I'm not completely screwed. Okay. So all I've got to do now is uh, I'm going to do a little bit of touching up. I've got some scratching to do. This needs a, a bit of a touch up here, uh, and then I'm going to install my my dome. And once that's installed. Uh, she can't be flipped anymore. Unfortunately, I don't need to do that because I'll only be working on the on the on the rear of this. I can get all the electrics in, and uh, we can take a we can take a look at this. We'll do one more final light check with everything on, including my side lights for my windows, uh, before we uh, seal the whole thing up and uh, we get going on this. And then once, once we've done that, then I've just got a, a few decals uh, and, and my stripes to, to either paint on or put on with uh, pinstriping, automobile, automotive pinstriping. Now I know Randy Cooper used automotive pinstriping and he, you get a really crisp line with that. And I do have uh, the three quarter inch gray uh, on order and it should be here it will it'll definitely be here before we, we 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 look at this final final and then I think that will do it for this update and uh, we'll do final reveal final final reveal in uh, and, and a whole and and and, and I think we'll do um, uh, well I don't know maybe we'll keep it to three. I don't know we'll see uh, but we're getting there. We're chipping away at it, and I think you'll agree. Uh, if I just gingerly tip this towards you, look, you can see it. You know, it's the spindrift. It's really cool. Lots of fun. 
Okay, uh, stick around and um, I'll do some more tidying. And uh, in the next segment, we'll take a look at a, a, a final final on all the lighting. The lights are on and uh, the team are out trying to figure out where they are. They've just crashed and Steve has gone out first in the fog with uh, his co-pilot, Dan, and they have just had a car drive over them and they've rushed back to the ship. But this is the moment after they've gone and the doors closed, they've just arrived. This is what you get. Looking really good. I've got to now get this all final, final closed up. We know the gap that I'm going to be dealing with, and I don't know how long that's going to take me to, to actually get that repaired. But I do know that until I get the front epoxied up, uh, and then I start working on, on slowly working my way back and getting it, getting it into you know, where it needs to be. Uh, I'm going to, but fortunately, I've got this opportunity here where I can actually get my fingers inside and I can hold one, one part and then I can go and do the next part. And so um, I'm pretty, pretty happy with, with all of that. She's looking really good. And um, I have to say, even when I tip, tip it up, you can see I, lo I love the lights in the windows. Now I notice here I've got a wire I've got to move. But you could also put some silhouettes in there. That would be kind of fun if you had like little silhouettes to look in uh, as if they were looking out the window, you know, or they're, they're inside. But uh, I'm going to, I'll move that wire now. I'm glad I saw it. But you can see I'm getting a nice glow from, from that. Um, uh, you can see in this camera, the uh you know the camera's picking up the leds but i assure you in person in the studio i've got a really really nice uh diffused light everything is diffused and looking really good the other thing i'm really loving is i love how the red is washing across the side of the ship really cool and of course um the 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 other thing that i'm i'm super happy with is the um the cockpit itself and i'll turn that to this camera so you can see we've got we've got plenty of plenty of light in the cockpit and everything is detailed and looking really crisp and fun so um we are we are good to go okay so i'm going to now get this thing closed up get um, and then and then see where I am with my striping and we'll talk about that. Am I going to go with automotive pin striping or am I going to paint this thing on and, um, and, and most likely get a better result? I don't, I, 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 I don't know. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about it. But uh, super excited. She's looking awesome, isn't she? I mean, this, is, <laughs> this is a fun thing to have. Uh, it's going to take up quite a bit of real estate. Wait till you see my diorama and and wait till you see it sitting in its diorama it's 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 crazy but uh we're we're moving towards the finish line oh look you could even i could even put my antenna in here um i'm not going to push it in too hard just yet because i don't want to break anything but look you can see uh with the antenna on now it's not down enough it's not down far enough but um yeah there she is Looking like the spindrift I remember from my childhood, the, 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 the machine that I always wanted and couldn't have. Great fun. Okay, so stick around and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at this all sealed up. Okay, uh, now it looks like the spindrift, right? Um, so what I've, what I've got here is a basic rough finished well not finished but you know we're getting there it's it's together so now let's take a quick look at the road ahead here um gap here gap here and a uh pretty decent 
pretty I'm okay here um, let's see here I'm okay on here in terms of gappage um, not so much here much much more much more to work on but um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start working on the seams and work my way around and start cleaning everything up and that will get this sealed up and locked solid and I think that'll do it for for, for this for this segment so what I'm going to do now is is I'm going to start putting my epoxy putty in get that all in and once that's in uh, we're, we're going to just let this dry and and then uh, then we'll, we'll we'll see what we've got but it's, it's going to take it's going to take 24 hours for this to dry so this segment when we come back it'll be 24 hours later but we will be dangerously close to sealing this up and then uh, we'll also look uh, at that point uh, we'll do fit final touches on the paint and then we'll look at this pinstriping situation and see what we're going to do and then once we've once we've got our pinstripes on uh, the only thing left to do is just to do some slight aging on this I'm going to do some um, well I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit it with a uh, a mat just to sort of bring it all down it's it's too shiny it's too bright bring it all down and then we'll we're gonna I'm gonna use some Tamiya uh, uh, pastels you know uh, you know the ones I'm talking about they're um, yeah the Tamiya weathering master kits you, you, you you've you've seen these you've all seen these and uh, we're gonna do some soot and then she and then, and then we'll, we'll then we'll take a look at the, the, how she's gonna sit in her diorama feeling pretty good right kind of fun all right I thought I'd punch in and show you how the other half live if I have to sit here and do this you have to too <laughs> yeah I um, so what I'm realizing here is I'm gonna do epoxy putty uh, just to fill the, the gaps and uh, then I'm going to come back when this dries tomorrow and I'm going to use a little Bondo just to really kind of polish it up. Um, I could even use some kind of um, filler, you know, like even, even, um, uh, even the Bondo Red should do it because at that point I'll be, it'll be pretty surface. There, there won't be a lot to do but there is a little bit of contouring that has to be done here um, as I as I'm looking at it I'm realizing that some of the some of some of the you know the it, it's not sitting nicely so when you look at it you you don't have that nice form and uh, I know from experience that if you don't sort of fill these gaps correctly you're, you're, you're just going to, you're asking for trouble because a lot of those putties can't handle the, these large gaps. You need Bondo or epoxy putty. Otherwise, it'll just, over time, it'll dry and crack. So it's worth taking the time and uh, you'll, you'll just get a, a, much, a much nicer result from it. And um, so, but to get this all sealed up is, 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 is quite something. And it's, uh, it's really fun to see it coming together. Uh, the nice thing about the epoxy putty is it, it, it really behaves beautifully with water. So as long as you're within the drying time and I think you get, you know, you, you, do, get a, you do get at least 45 minutes to an hour as long as, you, as, long as you're keeping it relatively, relatively moist, you're fine. And um, once it's in the cracks, it's it sort of stays there. But sometimes it can be a little fiddly to get get in there. But I have to say, um, it's quite forgiving, and it's a great product to work with. Now, there's a lot of people who go, "Well, I don't like Eves, Aves, and I, I I use this this one and that one, and I use epoxy sculpt because." the grain is better and you know in some cases I think that's true I think in some cases you you, you do get very various different uh, grains 
depending on uh, de depending on what you're doing. So I, I think that is that is true. But it's it's all it's all I think what you're used to, what what your preferences are, and uh, the kind of results that you 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 get you get with your epoxy sculpt. But uh, I'm pretty excited to have all this sealed up. So the next thing to do is just let, let this all dry. And then once this is, and I'm gonna leave it overnight to dry, so I won't mess with this until tomorrow. Um, and then, but once it's all dry, I, I'm gonna come in, as I said, with some finishing putty and um, just pick out any imperfections that I might have, have created here. Um, but definitely wanna try and get, get rid of as much of this as I possibly can before it dries, so I'm not I'm not fighting it with a sand with sandpaper, because you, you don't you don't want to do that either. Um, but it it sands quite nicely, um, although some people have complained. I know that some of my modeling friends and, and and people that I talk to, they they complain about it. They say that it's it's not easy to sand. Certainly not as easy as, say, say, Bondo would be. So again, you know, I think it depends on an awful lot of stuff. It depends on shelf life of, of the tubs that you have. I think the older they get, uh, the, the, the grittier they get. It's, hard, it's harder for them to maintain that, that, that fluid. But this is, a brand new, um, this is a brand new tub that I'm working with. And I, um, I'm finding it to be quite smooth. So that's a good thing. Okay, anyway, wanted to punch in and share with you what I was doing so that um, you didn't get a, hey, look at me, Mom. I've, uh, I did this behind the scenes. <laughs> we kind of built it together, and I love that. Okay, uh, come back when I have, uh, well, you will come back because I control the buttons. Uh, come back, you'll come back when uh, I've got this all uh, sealed up um, and, and, and sanded, I, I think uh, definitely worth looking at, at at that point. Well, we're together. Um, all the lights are on and uh, I think this is the, the, best, the best look at it. And uh, you can see uh, into the cockpit quite, quite nicely there. Uh, Very moody, very mysterious. Definitely lots of fun. I've got the antenna now that I need to put in the, the front. I wasn't gonna do it until I was finished finished because I don't wanna snap it or hit it. But everything is on. Uh, I'm now going to put on the logo decal, which is this one here. And this comes with the Randy Cooper uh, full interior exterior you, you get the exterior you'll get this uh, you, but if you get the interior exterior you'll also get it so those are going on uh, then I've got a template here which I made uh, earlier on and um, I'm gonna what I'll do is is I will I will lay this lay this on the on the ship uh, get my exact marks and then I'm going to take this off and I'm going to, I'm going to paint it. And then that'll be the very light gray interior. And then the exterior stripes, I'm, uh, to get a really nice crisp looking line, I've got this uh, automotive pinstripe uh, r right here. It's, um, it's quite a nice color. And... Uh, that will be the 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 outside stripe and uh, because this is automotive tape I should be able to I should be able to get some nice curves on this we'll see if I can't uh, if I can't most likely it's because this vinyl is too thick and I have to go to a thinner vinyl I don't know but we're gonna we're gonna give it the college try only because this is my best chance of getting something that's really super crisp now can I paint this on? If, uh, 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 absolutely, I could. But um, I'm just I'm just looking to to find the the 
quite frankly, the easiest way to create some, some really crisp lines. I think that certainly um, around the, the, the top here, um, although this, is, this actually looks a, little too, uh, looks a little too thick, so I might have to go for something a little, a little smaller uh, than this. This is, um, let's see here, what is this? Yeah, it's almost like seven mil, eight mil. It's pro it's too it's too fat. So um, I'm gonna mo most likely just get everything painted on because it's probably the 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 cleanest way to do this. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna get these logos on, get these stripes on, and then we will. Uh, we'll, we'll sit it at its diorama and take a final look at, uh, at the spindrift. Stripes are on. I painted, uh, I, I masked off and painted the inner stripe. Uh, I created a little template for that and I've, I used my, uh, my Tamiya vinyl curved tape it's very forgiving and that went on nicely and then I used uh, pinstriping to do the darker to, to, to do the darker grays and I, I, I think that worked out really well so there she is the spindrift all ready to go so I'm going to clear my desk now bring in the base and let's let's take a look at foliage and see what she looks like in, in her crash position but uh, before I, I actually do do that, um, I'm going to do a little bit of weathering to this. Uh, I'm going to use some some pastels just to give it some streaks, some black streaks. Just to, uh, but I will, um, and, th and then I'm going to give it a just a matte coat just to pull it all down and, and, and make it all come together. And and then we'll take a look at it in its cr in, on its crash on its crash site diorama. We're getting there. Okay, we're in diorama mode now, and it's pretty exciting. Uh, time has gotten away from me on this build. It, it has taken a lot longer than I anticipated, and with my travel schedule, I've not been in the shop a lot, so I'm always worried about you know trying to keep content up so it's not weeks without uh, a video. So sometimes it's difficult for me to do a finish finish but this this requires a little bit of, of time I'm gonna be putting things down today and and finishing things and getting them all cleaned up but I wanted to show you the basic the basic uh, layout for it because it's really beautiful and I um, I'm, I'm really glad that I went in this direction in terms of of, of a crash site and um, I really thank uh, the great Lou Del Meso for his suggestion to go crash site, you know, go in this direction and not just put it on a stand. So I'm pretty excited about that. I've got a lot to do here. This is just, things are just placed, but um, I'm going to be traveling. When this video comes out, I'm actually going to be in the UK and uh, going to Telford and uh, spending some, some, some quality time over there and doing some sightseeing and taking along a very dear friend. <laughs> You probably all of you know who that is by now, but we're pretty excited. So, uh, if you are in the UK and uh, it's and it it's not the tenth yet, uh, please uh, try to find us. We're going to be at Telford and hanging out around uh, everywhere, you know. And um, so, but let us let, let us know uh, if, if you're going to be there. We're excited. Anyway, here it is. So uh, I wanted to show you just quickly show you around what I'm what I'm doing here, and uh, I'm 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 really uh, really happy with it. I think uh, we're doing we're doing really well, but um, this is really kind of the angle that I wanted everybody to see, because I think that ultimately the scale of this is really beautiful. Happy with. Uh, being able to get that interior in there it made all the difference in the world um this is the voodoo effects lighting effect and uh so thank you to randy newbert over at voodoo for the lighting effect 
the diffusion I think went really well. I'm going to uh, obviously do a, lot, a little better job of, of placing everything and getting it all where, where it should be. But um, it's, looking, it's looking really good. Uh, the rear is looking good as well. I'm happy with the rear. That, uh, th that's, that's working as well. So uh, really, really pleased with that. And I got the right amount of diffusion. And it's impossible to see on, cam on camera here. It, it, it looks like there isn't any, but uh, there is. And uh, it, actually, it, it, it actually did very well uh, in, in terms of the diffusion. Although, you know, you can't, you can't see it in this video. But what a, what a, what a great, what a, what a really fun, fun, fun build this has been. And, and I'm, I'm really, really happy to, to have it in, in my collection. I'm, I'm, I'm super, super happy with it. I, um, I wanted to, uh, I, I wanted to try to get everything on that, that I, that I could. I, I think that it, it's a great scale. It feels good. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the scale. And so, uh, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing to have in my collection. And, um, I don't know what else to say really other than thank you for coming on this journey with me. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Drop me a line. I'm Spruverse at Gmail. Follow my in the weeds build video photographs on Instagram, occasionally on TikTok, nah, threads, I don't know. But anyway, it's always a pleasure to be here with you and to share my passion with you and to remind all of you that it doesn't matter what you do, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, three hours, Please, if it's a passion of yours, don't make excuses. Open a box, get, get excited again about building because that's what I'm here to do is encourage each and every one of you, no matter what your skill level is, is to get out there and build something. Be, be well, and I will see each and every one of you on the next update or possibly at Telford. Either way, uh, be well. Take care, everybody.